Yeah. Let's get all our supplies together. We're going graphite today, everybody. Charcoal, no, no, not charcoal, just graphite, everyone. I'm having a problem with my sharpen over here, eating up my pencils. It might be time to take this to the shop and get it, you know, worked on. Let me use this other sharpener I got. It's a good thing I got two of them, you guys. Good morning, everybody. This is Nadine O. I'm here with Don Stevens. We're about to get this party started. Party of drawing and painting and creating and having a good old time in this new year. I hope you're doing well. If you're watching us for the first time, go over and join us on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. Sign up there so you can be informed every time we go live, we get together and go live. Um, Again, my name is Nadine O. Today we're going to be working uh, uh, what materials, Don? Two graphite. Your drawing pencils, just graphite. Your regular number two pencil, your drawing pencils, or an ebony pencil. They're all graphite. I'm going to work with graphite today. No charcoal today. We just going to work with regular white drawing paper if you have it. And um, your, I would say, tortilla and, and your erasers and all that good stuff. You need an eraser, a paper towel, all that good stuff, everybody. All that good stuff. You need it out. You need that. You need well, why are we getting our paper together, everyone? Uh, if you have a moment, like this video. And leave a comment. Say hi. We like to hear from you. It's a new year. We're going to be trying new things. And we need your support. Your support is greatly appreciated. One of the ways that you can support us digitally is by leaving a comment or sharing it with your friends. You feel me, fam? Yeah. I hope you do. I hope you're having a blessed day. Don, you got your coffee? Yeah, we've been had that already. Yeah. But now we're working on it. Um, I've been doing the mushroom teas now. Ooh, so I got a think... couple of flavors of mushroom teas to, to get that to going. Wow. They call it the... Uh, of mud or something like that. Oh, you're doing the mud? Yeah, yeah, we try the mud out. Oh. I don't know if I could do that. I'll just wait a couple weeks, see how you fare. <laughs> I've been doing it. I just don't talk about it. I've been doing it. It's good. It's good. It helps to boost certain things. You get certain minerals in, especially that vitamin C on a regular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh food taste. Don't have to add sugar to it, so that helps you with your sugar content. Mm -hmm. You know? Things like that, yeah. What's sugar. that? I don't ever add sugar to tea anyway, so you don't? That's good. Say what? She doesn't I add sugar. Tea or coffee, you know. Well, yeah, well, most people do. I just make that 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 known so you see where if some people are trying to break the sugar issue, I'm just letting you know that that's another nice way to go where the flavor noise is such that you don't have to worry about heightening the, the, the sweetening aspect. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. Yeah. You know, great. That's the way you want to, uh, how would you say, um, uh, do uh, uh, your teas and your coffees and stuff. So, but you know, I let people do what they're gonna do, you know. But if you ever really want to know, everybody, try your best to drink it without the sugar. See what happens, and you may have a difference in experience. Yeah, there we go. All right. So it seems like our Jack Russell here is uh, he's on his side, laying sideways. So you could do this landscape too as well ladies 
So that's what I'm going to go for. Rather than the portrait format, I'm going to go for landscape. We're going to turn this around. There you go. Is this the one on the on the uh, chair, Lazy Boy chair? Yeah, that's the only other one you send me other than the close up. Okay. The close up is too close up. It's, you don't see his ears. You don't see none of that. Can't see his full face. So we go with the other one that you because you can see his full body, and then you can zoom in if you just to say that we're going to fill that whole space with him. Mm-hmm. Yep, so let me download this to my little laptop here, Richard. Let's go back here. Let's download that one. Like the close up is still a good one, but it's hard to, you, you don't, you, it's got all his parts in there. So then that means that I we have to make up things, and I don't know how confident everybody is to make up things. Let's just go with the original thing, man. Got it. Yep, yep, yep. All right, we'll close that, open this, and then I have the photo ready to be ready to drop that in. We go downloads. Hold on a second. There we go. Now I can do it here. We go to pop up. And we drop on Richard. Oh, pictures, it's pictures. been a picture today. Yeah. Oh, look at that crack. <laughs> oh, and he's posing like he he's like Rambo too. That's like a pose for the yep. kids. There it is. So. so uh, uh, <laughs> so uh, it's uh, graphite, not charcoal, right? You're drawing pencils. All your pencils nowadays is graphite. Like your regular number two pencil is a graphite pencil. It's not lead no more. It's not charcoal either. Uh, your drawing pencils are all graphite. So when somebody says it's going to be a graphite drawing, you can pull out your graphite sticks. Now, what you should be using is your B leads if you're doing your draw your your drawing uh, uh, pencils because we need that softness now and we need that darkness. So you would use your B pencils. Got it. All right, your two B, four B, six B. You know, at least have three of them in your hand or in your area, and make sure you got your eraser, everybody. You know, hold on, let me move this stuff around a little bit. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, indeed. Maybe I'll show that mud later on. Okay, we're going to use this off. Yeah, another one that I use is like a tea, like an immune boost, it's called home. Mm -hmm. That's another one. Used with mushrooms and uh, different nutrients at that point too, and you could um, do it as a tea. You can do it as a cold or a hot tea, everybody. So yeah, yes, indeed. Wait, do this thing. Yeah. Got Richard before he got a haircut. <laughs> Actually, that was a a, a botched yeah. haircut. Oh, okay, okay. Because <laughs> normally you see a towel, that's either bath time or grooming time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yep. He got. I had to clean him up. Yeah, I know that look. He was out in the backyard getting it in. <laughs> he was getting it in. I was like, oh no, we got to clean you up quick. <laughs> Don't be coming in here with that stuff. <laughs> go, go, yeah. <laughs> My old man, he's just gonna go outside, and get it all messed up. You know what I mean? 
Because my pit bull that was white, I used to hate cleaning them, taking them to the shop to get, you know, groomed and feel good. And he right. runs in the back rolling around on his back. Well, they all do yeah. that. Yeah. They want to get like, that stuff off of them. Yeah, I don't like yeah. that scent when it smells like raw oh. earth. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah, so is everybody ready? Everybody got their stuff? Because we're going to blow up with these now. My rich is going to be 18 by 24, darn near almost. So whatever size paper, put it on a landscape everybody, because you really want to try to fill riches with your whole page. That's the whole aim. You're going to try to make Richard the whole page. You're not going to worry about the towel and all that good stuff, the chair. We're, I'm going to show, I'm going to uh, delve into how you just pull something out of a photograph and make it your own. We kind of did it last week with Rambo or the last three classes with Rambo. We did it that way too. We just didn't make a lot of mention of it, everybody. Okay. So mm -hmm. just to make more mention into that idea on how you can take things from photographs and real sources in front of you and put them down like nothing else is around them. Mm -hmm. See, or like how we did last week, we augmented the background. We put small little elements in that we wanted. And that's changing the background. So you're still pulling the item out of the photograph and re-manipulating the, the uh, composition and everything, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Re-manipulating <laughs> You know, up enough. I know I'm looking okay. I'm looking like morning time, so. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, man. Let me see. Hold on. Let me make sure I get the crusties out the eyes. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop. The ride over was, was kind of cool this morning, everybody. Wasn't that cold? Wasn't that warm? Pretty cool. Didn't have to wear the long johns this morning, everybody. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. You ready, you guys? Hold on, let's see what I got working here. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit more. What you think, maybe? Or just leave it that way? Because I know um, sometimes graphite, with graphite, it's hard to see. Like, can you guys see that mark I just made? Yeah, I can see it. You could go in a little bit closer. I thought so. You got a lot of room on the top. Well, yeah, a lot, a lot of top heavy. Yeah, it's a lot. It's this real top heavy over there. Let's see what I can do. Maybe I can bring it down a little bit. Let's see. Sorry about that, you guys. You did ask about this before when we was off camera, Nadine. Yes, you did. That's a little bit better. Yeah. That mark a little bit better. So we'll stay there, Nadine. I just got to have the ladder and stuff in the background. That's our eraser board we used to use a lot, you guys. Mm -hmm. When I put those cameras set back up, then we can go back using that eraser board and everything, you guys. For certain explanations. Now we just use it for the private classes now, everybody. All right. Let's go. You got your coffee ready, Nadine? Miss Paulette? Actually, I have tea. Oh, cool. We're to the tea. That's what we're doing, everybody. Okay. Yeah. What tea you rocking with? Just plain old Lipton? Tea. Lip no, Lipton tea. Oh, okay. Tetley or Lipton? Uh, Tetley, I think. Okay, cool. Those are household, those are household stables. You either got Tetley. Or you're going to have some type of Lipton in, in, in your cabinet, tea bags. Mm hmm Everybody, thank you for joining us. We're, we're getting situated. We're about to start this. If, take a moment and like this video. We really need you to let the algorithm know that we're up to something beautiful. Like this yes, video. Give us a thumbs up. Give like us a Thumbs yeah. Up. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up. Yeah. All right, everyone. Let's get started. I don't clown enough. I don't mess with Nadine enough, and I didn't get to mess with Miss Paulette just yet. But I'm sure I'll get to it. <laughs> All right. If you're looking, and you have Richard, 
what you could do is from the gate, you could blow it up, right? Mm -hmm. So then this way, it really encompasses the whole square. Mm -hmm. And then now it's make them bigger. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you that based upon where we place Richard here, okay? So the way I'm going to start, Richard, you know the deal, everybody. Find center of your page, all right, hypothetically. I'll say center is right around there. If we look at the photograph, Richard's head is down and his body is up, you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can look at it. His head is already down. You can already say, okay, he might be here. His tail can't go no higher than this area right here. It should be an inch all the way around. You see, so if you do a line like this, like, right, just a quick little sketch line, like that, like this, this on the side here, like this on the bottom, that lets you go, lets you know, that's your identifier. Once I get to this point, I can't go past there because I'm going to be off the page and I want to keep everything in. You see? Now, you guys, that's adjusting and bracketing. It's just like the camera. That's why I'm going to say to everybody now what I say in my drawing classes. Think like a camera now. You get the idea, you guys? You, you're looking at something to strip it out of space, place, and time to replace it where you want it to go. For some of you that really, uh, really are not really confident in your mark making, make sure you have your eraser ready. Have your eraser pink pearl on deck, your needed eraser if you have it. Make sure that's close by you, you know, because I know some of us is going to really need the, the, the eraser. You're going to misuse your friend this morning. <laughs> Remember, your eraser is your friend, everybody. You don't want to misuse your friends. I'll leave it there. Right, Nadine? I'll leave it right. there. You don't treat their friends. Another thing you can look at, everybody, if you took the width of um, Richard's head, you can see that he's possibly three heads wide. Did you notice that? If you see the end of his head, not, not his ears now, his head. Mm -hmm. the, line, the line right before the ear on both sides. Take a visual measurement of that and then go to the side of that. You'll see he'll be almost three heads wide. So in mm -hmm. other words, let's talk about it. I'm going to start his head down here, Richard. All right, and I'm gonna make it a nice size and I'm on a big format. So just like we started the cat, we start with a circle. Now I'm gonna take that measurement of the head I made and I'm gonna go, that's one, two, three. That lets me know where the edge of Richard is gonna be, at least three heads wide. Mm -hmm. So it's high for me to make it to that mark there. It may not, you see? See how many, you know, I leave open for me to be able to save myself if I think something goes wrong, you see? If I think something is going awkward, I'm leaving all these opportunities for me to stay open. To, you know what I mean? Not have to stress putting it back in place. So that's what I, I, I like, you know, giving as a suggestion. You give that in the classes too as well, everybody. Yeah. Uh, and it's for any modality too. One day we may do cartoons here, Nadine. Ooh. You know, like you may put a picture of Richard and turn it into a cartoon. So mm -hmm. you can understand how to do things, Miss Paulette. Like you may want to take your take Rambo the cat, since you said you're doing the stories about him, and you may want to make a caricature of him rather than worry about him absolutely what he like as a drawing. You see what I mean? That's a good idea. Yeah, now you have a character. Rambo the cat, you see, and then now he can be commentary and everything. So I'll talk about some of that stuff. Maybe we'll do that too, Nadine. Cool. Uh, now look, Richard's middle meridian. Where is his nose turned? That's where his middle meridian would be. So now we're seeing both of his eyes, but we're seeing that he's not looking right at us, meaning that his middle meridian is not square with us. A little mm -hmm. bit off to the side. Because he's turning his head, leaning his head a little bit down on the top. Because mm -hmm. he's looking, looking at his owner, Nadine, and saying, what's up? You know what I mean, mm -hmm. basically. 
And it's almost like he's got to look like, why? Why can't I be Mexican? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why can't I be 30? I thought that's what I'm supposed to do. You know? <laughs> Bridges has had that look, man, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then he's got that look like I really don't want to be clean, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. so, everybody. We're really not seeing his neck because his fur is overlapping his neck and the fur is coming off his body. So, in other words, what we do is if we look at the backside of his body, we know it's not going no higher than this much of his head. Mm-hmm. You see? Well, mm-hmm. I try to see where that is. That's possibly where, around about two o'clock, if we use his head like a like a clock. Mm-hmm. That'd be about two o'clock. So then now I go up and I make the circle for his body. You see? His body, like how we did the cat. And we'll go, this time I'll go down to where his chest is. And then right now you look around the belly, right? If you look at the belly, not looking at the arms or nothing. Just looking at his underbelly, he's really up on his a little bit, on his mm-hmm. hind corner. So his chest is down, his belly is starting to go up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You notice know Yeah. Because now Nadine has the advantage. Now this is her Richard. So you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know what Richard looks like, just like what we had last, the last couple of classes, four classes in last week with Miss Paulette and Rambo. Mm-hmm. See, notice how I don't, I'm not really concerned about his muzzle and everything itself just yet. If you guys can see this shape that I made, it's all about simplification, everybody. How do we simplify to be able to get to our end result? Mm-hmm. Because most, most people, they start drawing, they're going to try to do each edge of him and try to be precise to the point of what they call perfection. That's a big old lot. Mm-hmm. If you take the chance and try this out this way by simplifying your forms and your shapes in front of you of the individual or thing or animal that's in front of you, you'll you'll become more successful in your in your uh, uh, representations. Mm-hmm. All right. So now we know that we have the chest there. We can even take his head for his height. Like if you take that circle and you look. He's just about two heads high. Yep. So then that means that his paw will be right about there. So we're right in the right area then. Because we're worried about that paw trying to go off the page. No, we want that to stay on the page. And now we start breaking down our situation of where the body parts are. So if you look, his little chest has a has a, a, a full puff of fur there on his on his chest plate. So I would put a little bit of a circle there, like so, to start that off right there, underneath of the muzzle area where you say you're gonna put the muzzle. That has nothing to do with his head. That's more so with his chest. Because now, if you look over from there, one of the paw shoulder would be right about here. The hind quarter circle for the hind quarter is going to be right about here. And notice it's almost the size of the dog's head, of Rambo's head. I mean, um, excuse me, uh, Richard's head. I'm still stuck on Rambo. I'm sorry, you guys. Honestly, I had a lot of people say they, they enjoyed Rambo and where does Rambo live? I got a lot of information to, to, wow. to relate to you with about Rambo and people's feelings on Rambo, man. <laughs> it's amazing how pets can, you know, how people are so connected to them. Yeah. That, I mean, I am too. All, I know you are. You know, you and Richard go through things, man. Y'all are like, you know, mm-hmm. I with her and Rambo and the rest of her, her other homies. You know, she said he's the one that tries to play calm all the time. Too funny, mm-hmm. man. Too funny. Oh, hey, look, you see now that he has a split in his chest right about here. That's right underneath his nose, you see? So what I would do is you have a puff of fur here, like a puff. So it's going to look like he's a bodybuilder at first, maybe, you see? Mm-hmm. And then what we're going to do is the other puff that comes forward from the paw right about here. 
You see? Mm-hmm. So you can see how the paw, if you're saying this middle meridian is there, you can see how the paw is middle if we look at the vertical align. And that's what we See what I'm saying, Miss Paula? You are so wonderful with this work because I could not see this dog coming to straight and stuff until you pull that leg up there. I was like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> I see yeah. how this is the chest area right here where all that fur is. You see? Mm-hmm. You look at the fur. Yeah. This is where the fur separates right in there to formulate what's on its chest. Then now if you look at the shifting this way because that's where the front quarter is up on his head. Because he's trying to act like he's being patient. <laughs> You see, then now you would do, you see where the paw is, you do a guesstimated shape in there for the space. And then now you can see where the paw is right here. And then that paw is right here. So you guesstimate that was, was, you can play with that area, but we know that that's where the paw is. He's sitting on his front paws like so. Aww. You know how I did it? You just make start making makeshift shapes that are described those areas. You see? We really can't see him underneath of his fur. We know with dogs and cats that are real puffy and furry, when you take all the fur off them, they kind of like a little bit skinny. Yeah. So that means that you can have a, a certain shape based upon how you see the fur move to see where the limb is, you see? And then you can see right in this area here how his belly is going back, his chest is going down to the ground, and his belly is being sucked up. You know, this area is going up where the genitalia is underneath that hind quarter. Mm -hmm. And now if you look, you can see that that hind quarter is right here, right off the top of the circle, come down right here to right here. You see? And then now that part goes right into the upper part where the tail is, you see? All we did was a shape off that circle like so, like this, then went down to this part here, and then over. Because he's remember, he's sitting on his hind quarter, so he's pushing his body up in the back. Front of his body is down. And it looks like he was wagging his tail too. Yeah. <laughs> See? So now we got that round part here. Now we can just adjust it and round it a little bit more. You see? Look at the dip on the top of his body where it shows where the where his rib cage is. You see? Where the fur is depressed, right about there. And it goes all the way, it shows that side panel and it goes all the way down and around like so. That, mm-hmm. yeah, and then that's where all the curly stuff is on the top. Like though he was in his rugged mode. I'm not. I don't want to be a pretty boy. I'm in a rugged mode. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm really dangerous. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Richard has that look. <laughs> now, if you look right. Oh, if we look horizontally across, the part that's on the ground doesn't look any lower than where that arm is right here in the front panel. So that mm-hmm. foot doesn't come that no further than that. And if we look straight up and down, that that paw would be probably possibly right in the middle of this here. So I can come down and say that's no further than the paw should go. We want to adjust it if we have to. Yeah, we can adjust it if we have to. But for for right now, we just want to be sturdy on the position and where we want to put it. And then now the the hind leg starts here. And then it has a little here that comes down. You're not seeing the part that's bent up in here because of the fur is all over it. Then now you can make what I would call a torpedo shape. This leg is right there. See, just like so, a little bit off the back, and then you have the basic shape 
for what that hind leg is doing. Oh. Yep, you see how he's almost there. Now we're gonna change up. We're gonna expand Foxy a little bit of this and everything else because he has the early locks in today on this on this photo. So what we do is just shape to simplify the idea to get him to going. Now, now look, we can put the tail shape in now. And look, we didn't even worry about the details of the face just yet. You see what I'm trying to get people to understand? Shouldn't worry about uh, details of surface quality stuff, as I call it, too early in the game. What we can probably focus on as a suggestion is the placement of all the items, simplify it as much as you can. And then through that that gives you an opportunity for placement and all this. So then this way you can get closer and closer to the reality of what you're seeing. All right. So now let's put the tail in. We know that the tail is not going any higher than that. Let's, let's we look at the, the buttocks of the dog here of Rambo. I mean, excuse me, I keep on saying Rambo. Thank you. Probably because of Rambo, yeah. So then look, some of the overlap in the hind quarter from the back, and then now it's coming over. Now make it a little bit bigger than what you think it might be. Don't make it a little thin, too thin. It feel like a tail. It'll feel like, you know, dung probably or, or you know, poo poop or something. You want it to feel like a tail because look, his middle meridian is doing this. He's turning his little body. See that? See how you see the shadow on the top? That's why you see the shadow on the top. So his body is turned toward me and he's taking the picture. Mm -hmm. See how his, his jaw is tilted? It's almost like a spray. Because the head is tilted and his, and his mouth is coming. So if you really look, everything is right here. And we did the um, the cat as a star, the dog as well. <laughs> and the only thing, the only difference between the cat and the dog is the dog features are going to be a little bit bigger. That's all. The nose is going to look bigger because it's it's broader than a cat's nose. A cat's nose is more triangular. The dog's nose is triangular, but I would say it's more like a Superman symbol. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the Superman symbol something like, okay, I got to get this face together from here to here. So look at how I'm in two circles here. To make it snout or his muzzle, whether it's snout right, you see, not worrying about the fur because look where the mouth would be right about here. See? The nose, this is where I would make the nose like that Superman symbol that I was talking about here, here. So it's like an octagonal shape. You see? Mm -hmm. And then now that's part of the top, you make a round part on the top so that that's the top. If you look at the picture, you see just a little bit underneath the fur. Okay, let's see here. Because you got to see that his muzzle starts right there where the bridge of his would be. That's where the bridge of his snout would be, where his part is doing right here. You see? And then now, if you look, if you look at where your mouth is looking at you got to have at least this much between those eyes. I make the eyes a little bit bigger over here. Right here. See that? 
You mm-hmm. should be at least one full eye in the middle with a little bit of space around it. Some people say, okay, is that one and a half eyes? And I say, okay, if you want to be that specific and that precise, then yes, one and a half eyes in between. And then you can start giving us that almond. Because if you notice all the forms coming from here, that's the way you cut the way it's from the eye, here and then here. I had one of these, these dogs too as well. I always really look like this the dog from the Wizard of Oz. Called him Toto. Toto. Mm-hmm. When I used to have to, I learned how to cut his hair. We used to have to grab and pull it, cut all the hair, but brush the hair back on his head to cut away the fur away from the eyes. So that's why it lays over like that. Mm-hmm. And I let mine drag on top. So he got a lot on top. I gotta find my pictures with you like that. Oh wow. Yeah, he had we had white locks on top of his head. That was his hair. <laughs> Even the grooming was knocked out. Like, yeah. Where's the taking everywhere? Same thing that you can do about yeah. Right on top of the nose here, right underneath the right underneath the eye. We have another one that does it, just like that. Mm-hmm. And from underneath of the nose, that fur comes out like a mustache, you see? Mm-hmm. Same thing on the opposite. Notice how it comes down, though. Yep, it comes down right up underneath the eye. You see? Yeah. And now, the other part in here, where the fur is coming from, you see? And it shows where that fur is coming from on the opposite side. Because now that's coming like so. And now you have his little, what I call his little gold T underneath his beard. Let's erase out some of this so we can see what we got going on. I erase out here. See, I erase out here. Now we have his little mouse now. See? Now, underneath the mouth area, I erase out here. We got it. Yeah, we can. Now, this is where you show the cut that they need. Okay. The butcher, the butcher job I did. <laughs> ah, too much. There it is, there. Then that, this fur up here comes this way. This fur comes this way. You see? Up and over to that point. You see? Up and over to that point. All that fur is on the side of his head now. All of that's there. And now, all the fur is going up here, right? Mm-hmm. And then where is the ears at now? Right on the side here. Here and here. And then, because of the way you cut it, the ear is going right into where that fur is there on that side. Mm-hmm. Oh, then that, but, huh? Oh, look at his face. You know. <laughs> But then that's all of that now, Miss Ballet. Basic shape of his head and all of that. Because all this fur is coming out of here now. That's the separation. You can put a slight separation there, Nadine, the way you want to, from the middle meridian. The other ear, you can see. Look over here on the side. Then that ear dips down and it comes over. You see? See how it's coming over his back and then down into this area. So now we have all the basics there of his face. See that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's too much excitement there. Everybody, I heard the excitement die down. Everybody started focusing again. <laughs> yep. 
now when you got it like, like this, this is where you can start looking around for certain things. Like, let's look at his nose and his mouth. Like the nose is here. And then now it's more of a round thing. So if you blow up at the canine's nose, Yeah. Put it there if you blow up and you're going to see the dog move, you're going to see that Richard in a certain direction. So if you look, his nose is more so rounded over here and it's going this way, curved. Maybe I'll take another board out rather than go to the board and we can do that. I show it bigger. But then now the nostril is here. So then look, the nostril comes from the side and it's here and back. That shape, everybody, can you see that, that shape, baby? Mm-hmm. Nose in here. That's the nostril. Let me darken it in. That's the nostril. One nostril there, that's the right side of the nostril, which is the left. And then now you come over and you mirror it. You do the same thing right here. It goes here to the edge. And it loops around and then down to the side. That's where that nostril is on that side. See that now? Yeah. Yeah. The bottom of the nose is curved there, so you can put a slight darkness there to see where that is. Do you want to use your tutorial? Tutorial, yeah, I would use it to set up the idea where some of the darks and lights are on the in this earlier stage like this. So now I got it. You see? Now I can round it off on top of the nose. So now when I come and erase out the white hairs that's going to be seen over the top of his nose, I already got it. Look at that. You see? Mm -hmm. So I, I know, like, right now, it looks odd. Like, wow, oh, it looks like Richard a little bit, but that ain't really Richard just yet. Yeah, that's what you do when you simplify everybody. When you simplify all the forms and make it very simple shapes and simple lines, you're able to look at the, the source that you're using to be able to figure out the placement of all these specific items. Be able to move and expand things. Now you see how the bottom of his eye doesn't even come nowhere near that area. And all this area in here is white on this side because that's the fur on the top of the nose there. You see? It's the fur on the top of the nose here. And now if you look at the mouth part, this is where you have a little bit of fur in this area that's coming down. You see? The cover of the mouth with the mouth open in it. Roll over of his bottom jaw. You see, I would just make it start, start it off with because some of this fur is going to come down and over that area. If the eyes, I was trying to mess with the eyes just a little bit if I'm okay with the body. You see, put that eye in there like so. Start showing where the, the cornea of the eye is because he's looking at you from an angle. When it's closed up, it looks like he has a funny look, man. He's looking like, all right now. <laughs> all right, it's done. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> all pupils are like how human pupils are. Mm -hmm. They just open wide eyes. So if you don't notice, if you've not seen it, around the edges of his eye is is the is the uh, cornea part. Because mm -hmm. I was a little dark in the room, so his pupils are wide open, real dilated, as they said, so that you can sort of get an optimal light to be able to see. And if you notice how faces around it, like so, you see those faces in between and around? Because if now this is where Right here, you put a little circle right there. That's where the tear duct is. Down, up, up, everything from the moisture from the eyes leaking. Yeah, this one is right here. You better can see this one though, because it's covered by the fur. 
But then you can see where the eyes are coming out because you can see where it's tonier is there on the sides there. Then I would likely see with a tone and where the hand is on the other side there. Starting to come. It's starting to come. That character is starting to come out. And I'm going to use my tortillion again. Just to smooth it down and get it ready. It's not my darkest dark, but I'm trying to establish all of that. This area here comes forward because I'm not, this area goes down and around. See how we got that stuff? Just that easy. That movement of uh, Richard. In here, I can start doing some of the marks that show how that curve is covering that up. That's not it. That's not That's his fur. That's the bottom jaw there. Or the bottom lip. Because you know they have an overbite. Some of these. Are. Oh, he has an overbite. Yep. Yeah. And now all the fur is coming out from that area now. Now you can do little marks like stuff to start that idea. See, because now on the chest here, that's where another darkness is going to be. See what we're starting to do? Now we can see on this side, that fur really comes out from here on the side of his arm here. So now it's the fur that's here, is coming here and in here, stopping there. And this fur is coming here, stopping there. Giving him that round look through his face, you see? Here, now this far, this far here. All the areas. Now you can look on the inside of this eye here, underneath where we're saying the fur is, it's dark. Smudge in a quick area of darkness there. You may start throwing a raccoon to you at first, you see? Now, if you everybody, now if you don't got it, it's okay. It's going to mean more work for you. We got granulated graphite. You see that, Nadine? Yeah. Outer graphite, you guys. Towel, right? And make sure you pick this area where you're not going to be able to knock it over or anything. Because I did that one whole jar this stuff, and it made it a real to have all everything. Hey, Miss Paulette, what you doing over there? <laughs> Let me go back. So I now you the graphite on my on my paper towel. Mm -hmm. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to zoom out so we can see. And it's just like how we did with the cat. If you want to, you can watch a picture of Richard in black and white. Mm -hmm. This way you can really see what the tones are. Oh, so, look at you have a hard time seeing the tone. The easiest way to see the tone on anything white, especially if it's white or lightly complected, you can put your photo on black and white mode and you'll get to see where all the good darks and lights are. So, you know, I don't some darks back here. I'm just establishing where some of those darks are. Not really trying to calculate them just. A nice little movement in there. Because that first stops too dark right around there. See? Uh, will we make his ears bigger? Possibly. Some of the darkness that's going on the side of his head here. You see? So the hair is there. And to show where the darkness is on this side. All this is in slightly darkness on that side. Yeah. Underneath here and then right here. All that. Yeah. 
here. This is slightly a little bit darker. So now you just, you know, smudge it just a little bit. You see so where these darks are. There's a dark here now. And there's a little bit of this jawline here. There's a little bit of here. You see? Now on this on the leaf here, there's a little bit of darkness in between here and then right here. Right up on the leaf, right there. We can expand his beard, as I'm, I'm calling it. But in all the darknesses is right in the front here. All right. Uh, brushing with here. Well, that's yeah. But notice how fast that went. Yeah. We will expand this area. This side. I can see it already. Right about here, Mike. Come on, And now, if you do it like that, like how I just did, you can come back and then around. And you want to do more. See what I did with the medium eraser? I erased it out the area where I wanted the fur to be. So that means whatever comes over here now. So, that's what to make his head a little bit more. So now, now I know here. 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 This is how far down he's been. More, you see? I cleared out. I cleared out the area for that. Now, if you I want to clear it out, I know. You got to come in here and get your knee to erase it, though. Erase it. Or your white or plastic. That's the erase it. 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 I got I got it. Everybody got to just decide these little things here. And once we go on, you can get me to erase Well, remember, if I want to clean off the eraser is dirty, but I'm going to clean off my eraser, put it on the sand, and it looks like that. And what I do is when I do this with my sandpaper, I put it on a chisel so I can have to do this. See? That's there. Now I come and I put that area. Takes all of that charcoal. Yeah, I don't want to watch one. See? Yeah, I got a chocolate in areas that are so light, and when I erase it, it just smears it. Yeah. Because well, you're not cleaning your eraser. Yeah. Yeah. I got about the same. Again? You have to clean your eraser or you fall back again. Don't wipe it with your hand. Wipe it with your hand. It's going to be a, a, a messy process. Oh, yeah. I'm in the back. Uh, yeah, but I got some sandpaper to clean it. See what now? What now? I got some sandpaper to clean my uh, eraser. Yeah, I have a tortilla paper. Uh, kettle, uh, like regular. Uh, oh, like, get the sandpaper from the dollar store. It's going to cost you about two bucks. And I just forgot about it. Got it. You know, I just uh, forgot it. But I'm going to get it so I can clean my head. Okay. Can't hear you too good. You chop it up. I said, I, oh, I also. Uh, yeah. 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 All right. I still don't hear what you said, Ms. Paulette. But. What you want to do is that if that eraser is smudging more so than it's relieving the surface of the graphite, 
You want to mm-hmm. wipe it off with your paper towel or wipe it off on your leg. Or if it's the needed eraser, you want to take it and stretch it and flip it on itself to clean off a nice area. And if you have any oil, lotion, or anything on your hands, that's not what you want. You want dry sandpaper-like hands right now. <laughs> because any oil or anything, any moisture is going to take it to a Yeah, you won't be able to erase off this you got with the oil. Okay. You have to use a razor blade or a smaller piece of sandpaper to scratch that area down to get rid of the oil from the surface. All right, everybody. So let's take it another step further, then. Let's go. Oh, I'm still good on this. <laughs> Everybody, so then now I'll be going to a little bit more. We can start showing ideas of how this fur may be moving, you know, from back to front. But then I would start doing little movements like so that seemed like I would you say early doggy. So I just want to get the texture to go in, even in that light area. I want to show how all this is moving. That this stuff is moving this way. Area right there. You see? That area is where the air is coming more. This ear will be Straight across to see how things are on line. looks across his mind. There, on the tail, he has a little bit of darkness right here on the tail. And that's when I would take my tortillion. Obviously, the other one is the paper towel. Either with the tortillion or you fold up your paper towel like so, you see? Mm-hmm. And now there, move that around. You just show where the darknesses are now, you see? Some of those darknesses up in here, let me show how that's moving in here. Move it is here, let me start showing that movement here. So now you have to make up a mark to be- make us believe the curliness of his fur. Yeah. And now over here, that dark area comes from here and leads right down into the fur is for the arm. Let you know he's crouching down a little bit, you see? Then if you look right here, this fur is here and it's connecting with his chest fur here. You know, some of the darknesses is right in here and then now that's all I'm doing. I'm trying to formulate where the darks and lights are. On this face here, that fur is going here, and then it's kind of like dark over top here because it's flipped back here and then down. Right in here, that's where the darkness is there, just coming down and around. This side, everything is coming out this way. Now we'll move up that fur. Got everybody. So then now when we come back, this for a there. So now you can truly identify 
where that gear is coming from. You see? Yep. All on the top in here and right in here, some of these areas. Just make that move, like how the fur is moving it, to make you believe. See how I'm moving the tortillion? Not the tip, but the side. See, I want the tip to stay on the tortillion. So you start using the sides, everybody, of the tortillion. Not just the tip, because if you just use the tip, you're going to make it a blunt object, round off. You need something in there. So when you want to go into areas like a round like how I just did, you'll be okay to do that. See? Darkness is on the top of the head here. And that fur goes right in. Yo, I'm moving to make you feel like that fur is there already. Just mm mark. -hmm. Just looking at the movie to make that up. You see? Sitting down here. Did they all walk the direction of things? No. Next, we'll more about the uh, tonality and everything and the development of more of him. And then we'll go into the background to come back forward. Right now, we're trying to get all of this together. Look across, it's in alignment with the bottom of his. You see it in the movements, you'll see things. See, if I look here, yeah, from his underbelly, yeah. And then now you see some of the arm here. That's where the fur is there. Come around to this nice area. Yeah. And then now some of that is right around here dangling off. So we'll just leave that like that. So then that when we come back in and fill in the darks and light on the outside, and then we'll be able to lay over your uh, marking for the to seem like over top of that that area or the top area. Yeah, if we look a little more, we can start like a nice movement is using concave and convex motion. So that's that C like the upside down U and then a U shape. Or if it's a C you a C shape like a regular C shape, and then you want to do the convex opposite way. Mm -hmm. So that's how you're going to make us believe in the hair. Just like that. Just like this. Start doing certain things, and it starts to show. For a minute, the line of the edges that that we're calling lines up with. And just remember, fur is always going down and away from the nose, from the nostrils, down and away from away from the face. You see? That's the way all your movements should move. Now I come in here and I show where the breastplate is. See, that comes off the beard this way. You see how it's starting to formulate? If I look, if I'm saying eyes here and I look straight down on a photograph, that's where that other first starts to move over and then back this way. Filling this area here. You see? And now that fur is on this. Oh, yeah, now we can bring that on in. I didn't even see that. I took the arm far out. That's all the fur now. You see, yeah, on his paw, from this area right here, going down and away. All that's fur underneath there. All of this is fur right here. You see, now, if you're having a hard time seeing that's when you come back in 
So is where some of the light sparks in it in that fur, if it's all covered in darkness. So you can see where that fur is now. You see? I'm gonna change my mark a little bit in some places. Down and in between the, the paws in the front there. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna get rid of the uh, spark. I got to get rid of the Didn't you even spark chopping up? Yeah, but I wanna, uh, I'm gonna try to get back on Wednesday so I can. You know, catch up to where y'all are, and I got. Oh, okay, you got. You got to go do your uh, political stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, Miss Paulette. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna. But I think Rich right out here because he don't have enough bridge to go. I'll also give you uh, a minute to fix that. But I gotta mm -hmm. clean my my. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. If you got a if you got a brick or a stone, well, no, not a brick, concrete brick. Could you do? Could you? I don't know. Well, I'm gonna get the uh the uh uh the the sandpaper. The okay. All right. All right. All right. I, I can't hear what you're trying to say you want to do so that if you don't have a disaster, you're like, what are you doing? She's going to get some blind. sandpaper. Just go to the dollar store and buy it from the automotive department. Yeah. I just want to show you Oh, hold on. Hold on, Miss Paulette, okay? Okay. All right. Um, Don, she wanted to... Don, she wanted, she wanted to show you where she's at right now. I right eye. The right eye? Right eye. The right eye. Are you having trouble with the right eye, you're saying? I can see why I need the right eye closer to the right side of his ear, you know, over. So okay. Brief, you know, so, um, but I'll do that. I'll work on that. So Wednesday, I'll back on then. Okay. We'll, we'll see you on Wednesday then, Miss Paulette. Be safe. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. All right, everybody, if you're still with us, uh, like this video. We want to know, we want to get that algorithm popping and leave a comment. Well, I want everybody to focus in on their work. The algorithm is going to do what it's going to do, just participate. But you really focus on, on what you're doing. You know, really applying yourself, trying to figure that out, not be so caught up in everything else. Yeah, sure, we're doing a group join, but this is what separates other artists from other ones. Who's going to focus to really get in there to really try to do things? And that's what you got to see. All right, everybody. I know sometimes you just got to be a sticker. It's not about just fun and games all the time. You know, you got to get serious and say, okay, where, what's the dilemma in here? Where am I at? And that's the difference between one artist and another. That's not one artist saying, oh, I'm perfect or something. No, they say, I need to get certain things in. So you got to look at that movement. And that's what a lot of times people have uh, situations with, focus issues, how to stay focused on the task at hand. So just know that, everybody. Look at how the fur is going in, in, in. Look at the photograph, in, down and away. Because now if you look underneath here, there's a dark spot. See, when you worry about certain features like that, we're not worried about that. Did you hear me complain about anything about the eyes just yet? No, because it's just about placement for right now. Then you got to come back and you start understanding how or start developing more certain features. But if you're not looking at the alignments like we're suggesting here, 
you're not looking at the alignments on the photograph to be able to get that, then it's going to seem awkward. Eyes are going to be off. Things are going to be off. As soon as you put the, the, the roundness for the eye in, you got to look at the bottom of the eye in the photographs. Look straight across and you'll see the bottoms of both eyes are on the same horizontal axis. That's the alignment. That's why you're taking your pencil to see where that alignment is on the photograph. So then now you can mimic it. Because now you can see the eye that's on the left side is doing what? It's more so on its side. Because he's giving you the, 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 the side eye look. Wouldn't you say? Yep. And that's what that is. So then now I would come back. So that fur movement here. Then come back, darken in some of the eye in here. So where the pupil is once again, because remember, their eye is just like how our eye is, except for it opens up more. And there you have it. The start of what that eye is going to be. Because then now I can come in to show where that fur is underneath in here. That's going to be kind of like a grayish color, you see? So then now all I do is just mold it out now. Now I come back, mold it. You see what I mean? And the minute I do that, look, we got the side view. So is that the finish? No, everybody tries to do the finish too early. It's too early to worry about a finish line. Yeah, then you just go into it and then you just keep on showing us lines. Show us the lines on how the fur is moving. And you're going to smudge those areas. You see everybody? Show the lines where fur is moving. And then give us a makeshift curly line. Squint your eyes, look where the darks and lights are, and then you start getting this look. This fur is coming from here now, so then I would make that same mark that I'm talking about from there to here. Remember, he's all curly. So this is just to start the curly feel. You see? Right to the edge of the paw here, around here a little bit, just to make sure that you're seeing what that is. Oh, all of this is dark in here. So now you can put right where you're saying the arm is there, you can put where the darks are, right in there. There's some distinctful, distinctive curls that's in there that you can put in around the paw, but you're not really seeing the nails too much on him. You're just seeing how the fur is wrapping around his body. So you do it lighter and then, then you come in and start doing certain areas darker. But notice, this is not, not the finish line. So don't think it's the finish line just yet, maybe. All you're doing is showing where those darks are, where the fur is going to be, you see? You can come back and then you can smudge it a little bit more, you know, just staying, you know, being mindful where the dark area is going to be and then lightly in some of the light areas do that round movement back and forth top to bottom like that and then you'll start to see how these areas are blending in you see and if you look at the photograph you'll see it you'll see that he has certain movements like so at the rhythm of the fur so you know his paw is about the size of his nose almost You see, I would do the same thing on the leg here. I would come here, like I'm working across here. Now I start to put in some of the darknesses that's on the paw, that's slightly there, using my movement to move that fur to give us a fur-like feeling. That's what you're doing. You're making up a mark that feels like fur. So the suggestion is you can use these C movements, U movements, you know, and even in the light areas, you want to formulate some of that in there. But go with where the body is. You see, and then what starts to happen is we get more and more richer in there, aren't we, Nadine? Yep. Well, and then now down the body, the concave part, so you can show that his body is, how would you say, buoyant around the belly. You see? Now we have all of that there, a basic idea of Richard, right? So now, you know, if you wanted to, we can slide around the background. 
what I would do is I would just make the background a dark and light thing. You see? So then what I what you also can do is once again, you can either use your tortillion. I mean, you can either use just the pencil alone, or you can use the granulated graphite. I'm going to use the granulated graphite to get this to go a little bit faster. All you do is you pour it inside your cap or you pour it on a styrofoam plate or something, whatever you're using, like so you guys. And then now all you do is you rub your device in there. I'm going to use a paper towel. You know, fold that puppy up, knock off some of the excess just by shaking it, right? You see? And now up in here, I'm going to start with the darknesses in me. You see? I'm just going to use a left or right motion. Look at that. You see? Uh, now I'll show you what the picture Let's make some dark. We're going to do the picture. I'm just going to make squiggly lines. That's going to help us with most of the squiggliness on him. Just to give it that feeling. And you can come back in and you smudge it again. Now what I would do, I, I would smudge it straight up and down. this time, So we can have different movements in the background. Since we're not really worrying about the place that he's in, we're not trying to show Nadine's couch and everything. Right, Nadine? Right. Now you see now. Now when I get down around to where it looks like he's on the ground, I'm going to shift and start making that line do like so. So it really can feel like he's on the ground, moving it in a diagonal fashion, you see? Moving it in a diagonal fashion. Because then when you get up underneath of him here, you're going to see how this part of his hind body is off the ground. You see, and just go with it all the way through. Go with it all the way through. Go with it all the way through, everybody. This is going to help you in the, in the supposed details uh, 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 of what you're going to have to do. And it's going to be a lot more work with your erasers. So everybody, if you got erasers or you don't have erasers, buy a bunch of cheap ones. Or you can get a bunch of... Uh, Number two pencils like this with the eraser on the back and use that eraser on the back to get into some of these areas that we're going to have to get into. You see what I'm doing with the pencil now? Just to show you. To be able to show those white furs moving and things like that when we get in there and start getting real intricate to bring him really out of the surface, everybody. Just remember, you're not trying to do the finish in the beginning, everybody. All right, so now you smudge in the same direction as this, how you just put the mark in and you should start to feel it. Are you feeling it, Nadine? No? Nah. <laughs> Have fun, put it in. Have fun. Smudge it in, though. Smudge, smudge, smudge. You see? And if you look at the way I smudge too, it looks like he's up off his hind legs now because I did that mark that way. All I'm doing is taking the, the idea of the direction that you have up there in the photograph and then just using it. Now, if you want to put your mark in the opposite direction, you can. If you want to put your mark in adhering to what the cloth is absolutely doing, you can. If you want to just make it seem like, you know, you took him out of a place and he might be just bending and jumping on the couch to look at you, then this is what we got. Look at Richard in the background giving us that. That's not me. <laughs> Bro, that's not me, Don. No. <laughs> you know, make up a story, you know. Say that Richard came to visit, visit you without Nadine. Yeah. You know, now the reason why I'm talking like that is because I'm going to be teaching a, a comic strip and comic class for kids on Saturdays at the Abington Art Center come up the oh. 21st. Oh, nice. 
Yeah, so then now what you do with that, instead of them being turned out on manga, I'm going to be showing them things like that. Like you take a picture of your dog and make a comic strip of your dog. Mm -hmm. How do you make a cartoon character of your dog so you can write this comic strip? Yeah, you can use these drawings for some of everything. You just got to be willing to go for the adventure. Yeah, you see? So now you see how light that is back there? I'm going to come back now and then start showing where some of that darkness of the fur may be at the tip there and how it might be curling on the edge. Not absolutely what it's doing, but I'm going to give my own makeshift mark. You see? See what's starting to happen? That leg filled out now. Where's the darkness is in here? There was a couple of new darknesses in here. And let's see, there's one or two here where his belly is going to his private area. You see, right there where the belly is coming right from underneath there. If you look, there's a slight darkness there before you get to the tabletop. And then now if you look again, now this is where all his side panel fur is right there. And you would make a mark that would go that way. You see? Now when we get over to the arm, this is where you had your good moments, Nadine. You must have been still for you to cut the hair around here. Mm -hmm. That's your sharp, sharpest, nicest cuts around his face and around his arms there. Mm -hmm. All right, I used to do the same thing to my, my jaw too as well. That's what makes them unique then, right? Yep. <laughs> you see, so now that darkness is here, you see? Where that fur is here, there's another line that's coming around here, if you can see the, the darkness. So you're looking at the patterns of darks and lights to say where this fur is moving and going. He's a scruffy guy, you see? So I know now for my last one, I just did what I always talk about with people that they should look out for, which is I jump from here to here. But notice it's still on the same line. So to have your passages and your jumping working together. In other words, you don't want to be working down here and then go work on the tail and you finish up the tail and the tail is finished, but the rest of the body is not finished. You see, that's what you don't want. Control your pressure, look on the leg here. There's a little bit of darkness there. If I just show where the fur is here on the edge, you see, around that there. Going all around his, his, uh, his leg here. But you wanna make a mark, everybody. This is a mark that you're making to make us believe the fur, you see? And you wanna look at the surface of what the fur is telling you in the picture to try to follow it. The best way to do it is looking at the darks and lights. This is where you're looking at the darks. Because if we get the darks together, the lights are gonna follow. Get the idea, Nadine? Yes. You know, you get, the, you get the darks together, the lights will follow, always. That's always the situation. You see, and then don't worry about things. Just come in and, you know, Smudge just a little bit to get that tone to come down. Because you know you can erase that out and then you can come back and augment it. The main thing is just showing where some of these things are at. Showing how that fur is moving. So you can make us believe that Richard is on your page, everybody. That Richard just took a trip and went around the world with everybody's house, you know? Now they mean you're not letting Richard out like that? Okay. Um, yeah, and he goes, he has overnight play dates. Oh, he does? Oh, all right, Richard. See, my dog Toto, he used to sneak out. <laughs> Time underneath the kids at night. He right, he was out there all night. No, he was, yeah, he was. And he went to go see his girlfriend next door or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, was a, he was a savage. He was a real guy. He, he really thought he needed to go out and roam on his own and he'll come back. 
Mm-hmm. Sleep all day. Everything. He even had a little rock that he would cover his hole. That's how we didn't know where he was going until I saw him come back one morning. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just like a guy would do, you know what I mean? Came stumbling in the house all tired and everything, licked his little bowl and sat in the corner. I was like, check this out. <laughs> you see? But then now you just play with the darks and lights everywhere. Get that to go. You see, look. Now I'm playing with the dark, darkness just to see where the paws are going to be, you see? Even though you can't see the toes, you can see the impression of where the digits are for the dog's toes, you see? And then now it's covered in fur. And then some of that fur is going to be discolored. So since we're doing a graphite drawing, that's going to, the, the, the dirty areas or the moist areas that stain is going to come off as darkness, you see? So then now I come up on here and I place my darknesses now that the tabletop is showing me to show that he is standing in the back. So it's a slight shadow that's happening underneath here. So now what I can do is now I come back with my eraser once again, the doll eraser, and then now I can erase out the area where I'm saying, he is. You see? See what I did down there, Nancy? Mm-hmm. Look in that area. That's what it, the, the fur is starting to look like. And you just want to set it up to where it starts feeling that way. You see? Because the only reason why it's lighter in that area is because his rib cage is coming out. And if you look at the quarter panel in the back, you see right at the bottom of it, you can see how the fur is lighter on the here, but it's dark. That means that his fur is overlapping that dark area that's underneath his leg. Then I would just put in where some of the light fur may be over here. But then you can come back and adjust that. You just want to establish where these darks and lights are going to be. You see? And the minute you do it, you got marks there, you see? Let's see here. On this side of the pole, watch what I do, maybe. I'm just taking the eraser and making those same marks that I was telling you about. The content, convex movements. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking to see where the lights are. Just to establish where that coarseness is going to be. You see what I did there? Yep. Okay. So then what you want to do is in all the areas that's light, you want to do a little makeshift movement. Like, like you see how his mustache is here and then that light fur is here. Yeah. So then now I got to make that here. And it's going down and away. Curving in this area here, going down and away from this area right here. You see, and as soon as I do it, look, it starts to change the way the body is. It's starting to give us his form more. This is mm-hmm. where you start doing adjustments. You see, like the fur on it that's coming off the his snout here. That's coming over to here. And then this is coming over and down there. So then I have the expansion of where that fur is even more, you see? Uh, Let's see. Coming from the eye here, there's the fur that's coming down to this point right here. You see? I can come back and reinforce that. I need to put that there. Notice how I'm starting to obliterate where the the ears are because I'm I'm starting to see I'm going to have to expand the ears. Mm -hmm. You see? But then notice how I'm not worrying about trying to be perfect just yet. I'm trying to get the patterns together the proportions together, the edges are lined up the way I'm seeing it in the photograph. You see, there's more darkness underneath here. So then I would come down here with the pencil. Oh boy, it's dropping, broke another pencil. It's all right. 
All right, now I come in here, and if I look straight down from his nose in the photograph, that dark area is right about here. Yeah, oh, well, a little bit higher, right about there. Yeah, because it gets a little bit lighter because that part is tucked underneath. Yep, there we go. All right, yep. And then this area is here, it's coming down in here, that's dark. Do so you see how we start formulating even more the darkness mm -hmm. as we back through? So then this way I can see where that fur is and where the tabletop is here. And then on this side, that fur is coming out a little bit further on the arm and up and over this way. So then now I come back with the eraser again and I erase out where some of these lights may be in here. Moving in the direction of the curl, the way it's looking in the photograph to get everybody to believe that's gonna look at the surface where this stuff is. And then it's actually an actual thing, you see? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm worried about, getting it ready, getting it together, getting it ready. You know, making little small augmentations where I need to. You know, I can come back and develop other areas, you know, bring that fur like so around this area. Now we got it again. You see? Starting to fill out in there. There's a darkness that you can take advantage of over here on the edge here. So then now, now I'm going to come up to a certain point, maybe right here, and say that's the that's the chair that he's sitting on. So then now all I would do is I would bring that up and then diagonal that too as well. Yeah, I would uh, keep this diagonal over here based upon the angle that you took the photograph. So now I'm molding even more. You see, molding even more. Get this side to move in that same angle. So then now I want this to move that way too as well. Because once I get my background together, I'm not going to go back anymore. You see? Maybe I'll put a couple of strokes up here. Vertical. And then I'll come back and smudge it. You see? Just to start saying what I'm going to do in the background. See, yeah. What time is it? Yeah, it's about that time. Oh, it's about that time. It's a good start for right now, everybody. I wouldn't stress it. You see. Now this is where you would look to where the position of the paws are. You see, now I'm looking again. My paw right here needs to be a little bit more over. past the, the uh, vertical alignment of where his nose is. So if you look down from where his nose is, it's in alignment with another portion of his arm over here. And then now that paw is coming out past that point. And as soon as I do it, I can see how it just changed up. Mm -hmm. You see how that make things feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's why I have these adjustment modes in my pieces or when I'm doing artwork. So then this way, I can see where this paw is, you see, with alignment with the side of his face. I can see that the inside of the paw is in alignment with the inside of the eyes. And then now I can move that paw over just a little bit right here. And look, as soon as I move it over just a little bit, I have the feeling that I want. Or that's desired or need mm -hmm. or need. Okay. Will we have to expand the ear over here? We possibly will change the direction of the movement here so we can get more of that fur in the middle here. Yeah. We're going to work on all of that. That could be next week. We can start doing that. Mm -hmm. so, like I want to do at least two to maybe three sessions on these. You know, so you can get a lot of fun. You know, you get a lot of know-how. So when you do a piece on your own, you have all these different movements that you can do to make people believe certain things. 
just know that when you want to make somebody believe something, you guys, that's scruffy or dense, you know, or very intricate, just know you have to do a thing called mark invention. You have to make up a mark to describe what you're seeing. So then that's why I'm so big into the surface idea because that's where you start to be able to see where all these movements are, where you can come in and start developing things even more. Then after that, you start worrying about the lights and darks again. This time we're just using erasers and the paper as the, uh, the, the, the brightness or the brilliance, brilliance, the brilliance of the uh, page. We won't be using any white chalk, everybody. A lot of people like to try to use white chalk on white paper. I don't, you know. I like to use the paper and the eraser to show these white values and things. And what I've found is when you, when you see a lot of artists doing that with just the, the smudging and the rubbing, you get a more exciting looking piece or a piece that looks more energetic. And all this other good stuff that goes. It's like when we did the cast. So once again, Rambo. Yeah. If you're an expressive artist, like how I throw out, throw out the suggestion to everyone, uh, you'll have a, 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 I would say, a better feeling at the end of this. Your ego won't be uh, beat up too much. But mm -hmm. if you that you perfection, it's a wrap. You're going to hurt yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. So oh, I always try to shoot for people to be more expressive than precise and perfect. But then you'll start making these different movements back here that I'm taking so candidly. You'll feel comfortable about adjusting that little hump back here on his back and showing how that's really just fur. And then giving us a nice mark to say how that fur is moving. You know, you see, if those are the suggested movements that I would suggest. Upside uh, U shape, upside down U shape, C shape, reverse C shape, concave, convex. Mm -hmm. If you do go, if you look at his fur, you see there's small areas where you can do that. If you look around the belly, that's how you can tell you really was brushing them on this side because the, the fur is going down and around. Mm -hmm. You would use that movement to show how the fur is moving down and around. But then once again, if you look at the black and white photo, it's going to show you all those intricate values in this area that you can't see in the color version. Mm -hmm. you see? And that's how I would use photographs and things like that to uh, do things, you know? I can play with it, put a new eraser mark there. That's a little highlight on the eye there that makes things come to life. I started off early just to show where that's going to be. And then throughout the whole piece, I'm, I'm in, keeping that in mind where these highlights are. So now when I come back and I do what I do, that's the ooh and ah factor. That's when people go, ooh, ah, wow, the eye looks real. It feels real, yeah. Mm -hmm. But notice the shoulder. See how I just put the two, the two little light dots there? Mm-hmm. How that goes with the nose. Look at how we have that excitement already. So now when I can come into the nose, I can just lighten up around the side of the nose. All right, clean off my eraser. On the same paper, just on an angle, you see? And now you can come in here and you should be able to erase out a little bit more effectively. That's the whole thing with the eraser, especially the plastic eraser. You want to have good contact to the surface to be able to relieve it of any of the darks or of any of the material that you need it to move it off of, you see? Mm -hmm. That's all it is. You come in there and start forming. 
where those things would be. And then I would come back and just lightly reinforce them. So then I know what that area is looking like. You see? see what's starting to happen now? Yeah. This way I can make the nose a little bit darker on the bottom here in the shadows, you see, just to start that idea off. And for me, I'm just going to play up the fluffiness with the, with the fur. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty good start. Everybody, I mean, what you think, everybody out there in virtual world? Okay. Nice. Yeah. What you got, Nadine? What you got? I wasn't able to see Miss Paul. That's up on the screen there. So if you were seeing it, that was great. I, I couldn't see it on this side, so I couldn't really say nothing to it. But we'll say something to her next week, Miss Paulette. So you kidding? If you look at uh, Hump Day Wednesday, I uh, retake Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, the, I, I have a list says Throwback Wednesday, going yes. back to the last Sunday. Uh, Miss Paulette said she would go back and watch. She would be watching Throwbacks uh, Wednesday. Yep. So. All is good. Yeah. yeah. And that's what that day is there for. Yeah. If, if you look at the, the image here, let me get it back square with the camera here. You know, mm -hmm. knock it over a little bit. There we go. You see, we have the basics there, everybody. Mm hmm Not supposed to stress it. Just throw it in, and then we can manipulate that later. Can you see? So, all right, Nadine. You have my picture pinned. You got to unpin me so I can see that stuff. Oh, sorry. I thought you could see me. Uh, mm -hmm. It's because I'm pinned. Now I should be able to. There we go. I see you now. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, oh, okay. oh, you did it on the newsprint. Mm -hmm. So that means when you do graphite on newsprint, it's going to come off shiny, or is that white chalk? It's coming off shiny. Yeah. So then just tilt your light away for a minute. Any light that you have, just tilt it away from it. I have to. Uh... All right. Don't worry about that. Yeah, there you go. That's There you go. That's better. So that, so that the reflection doesn't get red into the camera. Yeah, there you go. You mm -hmm. okay, Nadine? I worry about the look at the leg. He's not sitting, he's not standing on the tip of the paw in the back. Yeah. He's got that whole part, that whole limb laying down. And then mm -hmm. his thighs pushing his hind quarter up. You see that? Yeah. And that's where that darkness is underneath, right underneath the leg. Okay. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Then with the other part. You look at the paws, right? I, I, I want you to look down in the photograph, straight down from the nose, and you'll see that the paw that's on the left, you need to move over. And then the paw that's down on the ground on the right, you have to extend that over a little bit more so that his paw passes by his nose. Okay, got it. All right. Yep. All right, then that's it. It's a done deal. That's done the start. Deal. Yep, All right. Of mm -hmm. Richard. Yes, Richard made his debut on Let's Paint and Draw Along. Thank you, everybody. My name is Nadine O. And we're so glad that you joined us today. We hope that, uh, well, let me see if I can get, oh, I'm doing something wrong. Let me see if I can fix that. There you go. There I am. Thanks everybody. My name is Nadine O. You've been watching Let's Paint and Draw Along with Don Stevens from donstevensart.com and Nadine O with the Yeti no, Project. No, we're not separate. Nadine O and Don Steve and Don, uh, what you say? Don Stevens and Nadine O. Let's draw along. That's the way it's been. It's not separated like that. You can go I and know, check but out I'm, I'm trying to get your plug out, brother. Let me let me let me showcase you for a second so they know where to go to find out more about you. Let's talk about how we're gonna do that. 
Right on. All right. Okay. So keep creating, everybody. Yeah, let's keep go. Keep creating, everybody. I thought we were going to get a little more. All right, keep. Oh, oh, Don, you said there was something going on with the kids. We can do it on air if you want to. I was going to do it off air. Uh, wh what's going on with the kids? You mentioned the kids. That's coming up. We'll see where I'm at, Abington Art Center. DonStevensArt.com. Yep. And that's, that's happening when? Say again? It's happening when? It's happening now. It's happening in the month. Awesome, y'all. So don't waste any time. Go over to DonStevensArt.com. He's got some great stuff he's doing with the kids. Um, you got any grandkids, your children, your friends' kids. This is an opportunity to share this love for creating. That's why we're here, to share the love for creating and to get you to create. Isn't that right, Don? Yep, that's the intent, always. Awesome. So without that, without uh, going into a, a goodbye Virginia moment, <laughs> however that is, I want to tell everyone I want to share, I want to say to everyone to have a great week. Uh, you, if you want, you can check the replay on Wednesday, throwback Wednesday. You can watch it live. Okay. Throwback Wednesday live. And please leave a comment. Um, like this video. This really helps us. We enjoy uh, bringing you this opportunity to get together and create. We miss not having you here and we would really like to see your beautiful faces as we create here on Let's Paint and Draw Along. All right, everybody, what do we want them to do? Hey, everybody, keep creating. Yo, keep, keep creating, everyone. Keep creating, everyone. All right. Take care. Have a great week.